My name is Louise Toppin. I am a professor currently at the University of Michigan where I teach voice and previously I was the director of the music program at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill where I was a distinguished professor and then before that East Carolina University. So I've had a 30-year career in academia. In addition to my work in academia as a voice professor, I also have been singing professionally, opera, oratorio, um, art song with a specialty in African American repertoire. And part of that inspiration was my participation in 1995 on that wonderful concert in Boston. I was, um, in 1995, I just graduated in 1990 from the University of Michigan, so I think I was the youngest participant on the concert as a person who was just out of school and beginning a career. And I believe the reason I was on the concert was Sylvia Olden Lee, who I had met at Michigan and began coaching with her, uh, my coloratura arias. She always used to confuse me and Kathleen Battle. <laughs> That's what she said. She would call me Kathy many, day, many a day as I worked on my arias. Um, but I think because I was a coloratura and Matawilda Dobbs, who I had also met um, at her insistence that I get to know Matawilda Dobbs, um, I was there to represent the work that Matawilda Dobbs had done. Um, and one of the journeys that I took coming out of Michigan was to meet and work with all the great coloratures. So I worked with Matawilda Dobbs, Charlotte Holloman, Riri Grist, and Joan Sutherland. And I spent time with each of these women learning how to be a coloratura um, because I had begun my musical background as a pianist. I had two degrees in piano before I met George Shirley um, after finishing my master's in voice and I began studying with him and he brought me to the University of Michigan. So between George Shirley, who was the program chair for that wonderful event, and, Matt, and Sylvia Olden Lee, who knew me and, and had worked with me, and then Matt de Dobbs, who was being honored, I think I was asked to be a part of the quartet that was the last um, piece on the concert. Um, she also asked me to sing Caronome to represent Matt de Dobbs. But I remember sitting backstage and waiting for this concert to begin. Um, and as it was progressing, I remembered hearing all of these people whose names I knew so well, seeing them live and just, I can still see, even though it's been quite a long time, I can still see the performers coming and the enthusiasm um, from the audience as they recognized so many African Americans who were working in Europe, who were working, um, primarily working in Europe, and so we knew their names, but I had never seen them live. Um, but also the honorees, and it, it just, all of these people that I had admired as a singer, um, and that told me that I was on a path that I could be successful as an opera singer. Um, it was 11 o'clock, if I remember correctly, before I sang Caronome, and I remember thinking, oh my goodness, I have a high D flat to sing at the end of this quartet, because I'm taking the high note, and it's going to be in the middle of the night. And sure enough, it was one in the morning before I finished that last note of the quartet. Um, and I felt so honored to be that last sound that people heard. Um, but the thing that struck me most was nobody left. The concert started and three hours later we're still there and having such a wonderful celebration of African American artists and artistry um, throughout that one evening. How that has impacted me in the future, in the broader um, context, is that I, I not only was my dissertation area had been African American music, but it let me know that I really wanted to do more to bring the stories of African American, African Americans as artists out, um, and also African American music. So I've spent a career teaching African American music, um, presenting operas, presenting art songs, lectures, presenting research tools, presenting conferences that bring people together to look at uh, the music and contributions of African Americans. The Inouye's um, emphasis on 
our, on uh, African Americans in that early days, in those early days was a part of my, the formulation of who I am as an artist and who I am um, knowing that there was an organization outside of NAM, which was already supportive of African American arts, but a, a non-African American organization that took the time to um, to honor and to encourage the work of African American artists. That was such an important um, boost to me as a young artist and has sustained me through the 30 year career that I've had already in this area. I was honored in 2015 to be the recipient of the Legacy Award and when I received my booklet and looked at all the names uh, of the people who had been uh, recipients, I had the same shocked moment as I did in 1995 of being the youngest singer on a program of legacy people. I mean, these were real stars and I was just a young singer starting out. And here I am in the booklet with these very same people, starting with Marian Anderson and George Shirley and all of these people that uh, to have my name counted among that, that, that illustrious group as a legacy winner was one of the prides and is one of the prides and joys of my life to have been um, acknowledged in that way or to be honored in that way it was quite a surprise.